recognize about cat abuse and still brought in so many people tonight. So, um, I don't know, um, don't have a general sense of everybody's backgrounds and um, where you are with JavaScript and what the abuse underscore. Um, but this is just going to be a general overview and hopefully cover a few things that will be interesting to anybody. So, um, if you know nothing about underscore, it is basically just a utility library. And that makes it a little bit difficult to do a presentation on, because um, we just have a lot of utilities. Um, what do you really cover without just rehashing the documentation? So we'll, we'll, we'll just point out some highlights. Um, and another thing that, that uh, I think is the main thing that seems out to a lot of people is that it provides support for functional programming. It's not the only one, and it's not the only way to do functional programming in JavaScript, mm -hmm. but it's, it encourages a functional programming style and provides a lot of utilities that um, um, encourage you to think that way and, and give you a lot of these, the, the functional support that you have in other languages as, um, as, as built-ins. Um, it's general purpose client side and server side, so it has nothing to do with DOM manipulation. Um, it, um, there's some overlap with jQuery. jQuery has some of the, the same utilities added fairly recently. Um, but it's everything having to do with the browser is, um, is, is, is jQuery and not underscore. So um, you often use the two together on the client side. And on the server side, um, it's very commonly used. Um, it is the most Depended on module in NPM and Node.js, so that indicates that a lot of you know, people are um, are using it, and I found it useful in that. Um, so there were over 70 functions, and these are the general categories. So collections are um, arrays or objects. So it would, it would be iterating the, uh, the properties in the objects or um, iterating an array. Um, so all of those methods apply to both arrays and objects, and then there are and, or, 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 and then there are functions that apply to just arrays or just objects. And the one in the middle there, um, functions. Those are functions that um, are meant to operate on functions. So um, that's obviously um, uh, well, we'll, we'll get to some of those. So. Um, and then there are utilities, um, um, there's general purpose things and, and some um, things to uh, enable chaining. Um, so just for background, for, um, JavaScript functions um, are objects um, and they are values. You can be assigned to a variable, can be passed to another function as an argument, and can be returned by a function. Um, Really, those those um, last couple of, of properties are really what what defines functional programming. Um, not 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 pure functional programming. Not a purely functional language, which has other constraints. But those are the basic attributes of functional programming. Um, so, using functions as a mapping from one value to another is primarily what um, functional programming is about. Um, there are a lot of different ways that you can um, lay out code in your interactions, but um, the, the basic idea of the, the function takes some input and provides some output, preferably with uh, no side effects and no state changes and um, all of those additional rules that are, are, are specific to being purely functional, but it, um, but the general idea of, of, of a function providing a transformation is, is the way that you, uh, is the general way of thinking in functional programming. Um, and so that, um, by its nature, requires you to think in terms of higher order functions, um, with composition of functions and, and, um, and chaining, and, and um, there are a whole lot of things that would be out of scope there, but that's just all about um, a couple of the usual suspects which, um, it, um, that are also not provided by jQuery and uh,
<laughs> I apologize. Some of the things we're pasting in those images here. Um, I'm running this off of Greg. Just uploaded a slide share, and he's got. Can you expand the bots? See if you can increase the resolution. I, I, it, it's just the way it's scaling those up. I, I, I need to fix it in the slides. Um, the original wasn't that bad. Um, so um, the, the next three here, map, map reduce and filter. Um, these are now provided in the utility that are included in jQuery, and you now have them in um, latest versions of JavaScript implemented in the um, last couple of versions of the major versions of Chrome and the last couple of major versions of, um, of Firefox, and um, anything from IE 8 or 9 on. Um, it may only be 9 on. Um, so um, if you're worried about browser compatibility, don't necessarily have the native versions of these. Um, if you're working on the server side, you probably do. Um, either way, um, if you um, were useful to know about, and um, this would definitely be a starting point if, um, if, if, if these are completely new concepts. So um, doing a, ma a map is basically just transforming an array into a new array. It's a, um, it's kind of the um, the quintessential um, example, in in some ways, of, a, of, a, of um, functional programming or of, of a, a um, functional style of a, take, taking something in and transforming it into something else. And um, and map functions can be used in a variety of ways for a variety of purposes, but that's always the basic idea. It can be used as an extractor, as, as a transformer, um, and um, the, the alias collect, that's often, that's often provided as a keyword in um, the other languages. So, um, in, in underscore, um, it, when it comes to functions that commonly have other names, they provide aliases for them so that you could use, actually use either one. And in the documentation, you will receive a list of aliases available for you. So, if you're used to using collect in another language, you can do that here. Um, reduce, accumulate a single value from an array of values. Um, an example could be if you were counting um, or sort of summing up some values. Um, so you have an array of objects, and you're basically going to be looking at um, at one property and, and summing that up, or maybe um, building a, um, a a map of counts. Um, of you if you need values or something of that nature. But, but the, that, that's the general idea. When you hear um, map reduce, um, it's generally um, talking about the um, the distributed um, um, way of, of, of writing code that, that is more specific to all um, the, the frameworks in, inspired by Google's original map reduce and um, all the. Uh, and, and, and no SQL all implementations nowadays, that, that's very, very common. Um, um, it's a different concept, but it's very similar. Um, and working with CouchDB a lot um, lately, um, it's way, the way you do your indexing is through um, providing um, a map that defines your indexes and um, optionally a reduce. And that, that is really doing that sort of map reduce. And, and in um, some cases, that can be you know, basically running a distributed map reduce job across the cluster. Um, but it really comes down to just a, a map function and a reduce function written in JavaScript. And it's very parallel to um, the way it's used here. So those concepts aren't that far removed um, um, from well, I was going to just point out one thing that I don't know if people are aware of this, but there's been a lot of work in the underscore library uh, to make sure that the uh, the functionality, whether you're on the latest browser or whether you're on an older browser that doesn't support those things natively, is exactly the same. So underscore, for example, the reduce function will fall back to the, the native function if it's there. If it's not there, then um, it provides its own implementation. Uh, but no matter what the case is, it'll work the same. It'll, it'll work the same way, and they've been very careful to make sure that's the case with, you know, with respect to all the built-ins like map for each. 
Yeah, so if you're using it in the browser and somebody happens to be running on E7, it's going to provide its own implementation, but um, if you're running a browser that supports it with the native implementation, which is going to be um, more efficient, then um, it, it, it will use it. Yeah, thank you. Um, and um, filter, um, giving a subset and an array that meets my conditions, essentially. Um, you know, um, I think anybody, um, most here are, are, are probably familiar with that concept, but it, um, uh, it alias and select. So just um, pulling out some, um, something that you're interested in with some arbitrary condition. And, and you'll notice with the code that you can barely read because of a problem that um, the, um, every one of these cases, you're essentially passing in your array of values and a function. And here the functions are in lines, but um, more typically you just um, uh, pa um, pass in a variable that, that um, has the value of, or that, that, that points to your function. So um, it's um, the, 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 there's there's a certain contract that is going to make sense for each of these functions, like with filter, that it um, um, provi provides a, um, a, tr a truthy return value um, to, but, but um, they essentially all work the same way, where inside of the function you're thinking about what you are doing with each value as um, it comes in, and, um, um, or as, as you're iterating the, um, the array that you're um, wanting to run that function over. So um, all, all of these kind of fundamentally represent um, a um, um, first level of, of, of um, functional composition where the, 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 it's a function that runs a function over your data. Um, getting into this, some other very <coughs> useful um, highlights. Um, um, Memo-wise, there, there, there were different implementations of this. You, many people have their own, but um, if um, the, this this one is pretty handy, so it just gives you the capability of caching the result of a. Um, a uh, for instance, if you have a, um, a a function that is um, has to do quite a bit of calculation, it takes quite um, a long time to run, um, maybe even has to access external resources, um, but maybe um, need to be run multiple times. Um, this basically enables you to, without having to write any code for it, to just be able to um, cache that result so any subsequent calls for that function are going to um, just return the value um, from a local cache that um, it, it's, um, it takes care of providing the hashing function um, and, 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 and the cache and caching results and, and the lookup from um, that cache. And, all that so it's, it's it's pretty useful and really easy to use and um, I actually used this one quite a bit recently and um, it, it is definitely worthwhile to know that um, you can know um, I, I used to be a fan of meta programming um, and in JavaScript um, it, it isn't quite as applicable but I think maybe those coming from a Ruby or, or Ruby backgrounds might appreciate functions like um, like wrap and tap that basically give you um, wrappers. So, so, so wrap is um, a, um, a wrapper function that gives you the ability to um, execute some arbitrary code before and after your function runs or, or adjust the argument. So it, it, it basically gives you um, those before and after interceptors um, so, so that you can um, do any kind of um, typical metaprogramming patterns there. Um, and tap in a similar way. Um, it's just providing a, an interceptor. So um, for, for those from a Java back, background who are maybe have done those sorts of things with AOP, it's the same kind of concept. Um, and um, there's a variety of functional helpers, but the uh, most fundamental is Compose that it just enables you to compose some um, arbitrary uh, or list of functions, um, and um, 
it, it, in a sense, this is this is chaining the functions, but it's it, it can be done in a very transparent way so that you can um, um, compose a sequence of operations in a sense provide a flow. Um, and a, a, another way of thinking of this, and since somebody um, tell me if this is a poor way to think of it, is that this. You could essentially, if, 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 you, if you have a, um, a, a number of, uh, if you have your program very decomposed and have many functions that could be combined together in many ways and in many sequences, um, and, and, and languages that better support um, currying, you would typically, um, you, you would do it that way, but, uh, and you can do currying in, in JavaScript, but this is another way to think about that, that um, of, um, of, of building up, um, partially applied functions, um, but from kind of doing it from the other direction. Um, because you're, you, 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 you could be, um, the pieces that you're composing are the same concept as what you would have um, partially applied as, um, as um, if, if, what, if you were partially applying functions. So. I don't know. Does that make any sense at all? Or? I have a quick question. Uh, how, does, how does named arguments apply to that? I mean, do you typically just reference arguments uh, when you're composing functions, when you're creating compositions of functions, um, since you can't? I mean, I guess one function could return, well, I guess not. <laughs> um, yeah, never mind. It wasn't that clearly thought out. I think you pretty much have to have it figured out already about what what those functions were going to return. Yeah. It's not like a monad or anything where you could like you know wire up the flow that way. You're going to have to already right. figure out what's what's going to be handed back by H before you could you know, compose it in G. So sure. Yeah, do you mean in the sense of, of having um, different Dif different arguments to each of those functions and how that's that's going to map together. I mean, right. since, since you're applying, it, it, it implies one return value and one argument. So um, you could do that in different ways, just like you treat like the arguments array, um, arguments to array um, in um, similar cases. But um, I mean, I guess I guess the, the the number of arguments that you pass to the the composition would match the number of arguments that are referenced in the innermost method, right? And then each containing method would just have one argument would be the return value of the, the contained methods, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 It's essentially, yeah. Um, flow helpers, there's a, there's a few different things and, um, and anytime you start doing much of this um, using a library like async is probably more useful, but um, I, I did find this one useful before, and it's uh, similar to um, some of the, the um, some of the Ajax API and jQuery, um, but just a, a, a basic after capability that um, you can specify to run after a set of operations have completed. So um, if, if, if you're running 10 asynchronous operations that maybe um, you know, have to do with database updates and calls to other, uh, other services, maybe they're going to multiple services, you, you know how many should be returning, but you don't want any code to run until those things have completed. Um, th this is often something challenging to people when they get into JavaScript is how do I handle um, the control flow of many asynchronous operations when I want this to run after all of these things have completed, but I'm not really sequentially um, um, controlling the, the, the flow of, 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 of all of these things. So um, th this provides, in some cases, and, and, and the after and in other, in other similar methods, provides a, a simple way of, um, of handling that that actually does work. So. Um, you uh, basically can have all of your callbacks 
call into this function that's been wrapped by, by after, and it takes care of not actually calling it until the final callback. So, um, so that, that tells you that everything has completed, and so then when your code runs, it's running when you intended it to. Does the counter reset? I mean, in other words, if you had 10 set timeouts and you had the thing with a count of 10, and the set timeouts fire, well then, well then the count be set to zero, so it'll fire again the next time it's called 10 times? Or I mean, if you had, imagine you had 10 set intervals, you know, and so you have the count at 10, and, and you know, the callback for those set intervals was this after function. And then once it runs, I mean, does the count reset so the next time all 10 intervals fire, it'll run again? Um, no, I mean you could re you could rewrap it. Okay, it's just a one time, one time thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, internally, it's it's keeping a counter. It's it's not really exposing that. So. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, it, it it it's it's simplifying that, doing things for you that you might otherwise write your own code to do. Um, there's um, a few utilities like that, and um, in, in in simple cases, or if you um, you know, aren't ready to to dig into async and and or other libraries like that, it, it can be useful. So, um, so it can't be an actual integer where you you know you're making four different calls, you just put the number four there and the one to run afterwards? Yes. So you could have two afters if you want something to run right after the second call and something to run right after the fourth call, you can have both of sitting there? Yes. Um, yes. Um, and That was the last substantial slide. I know, um, want to try to keep this this short so that there's time for um, um, the grant this. But um, does anyone have any questions about any other pieces they see here, or just general questions? Uh, actually, can I make a comment? Uh, the the way that uh, underscore implements map is not actually the same way that. Jquery uh, implements map, so they're not actually compatible. Um, the way that underscore does it is right, but, <laughs> but um, it's something that you should know if you're ever scrolling between the two. It's not the same map because uh, Jquery's map. If you return null, it will delete that. It won't actually include that item in the list. So, like, yeah, it's it's a filter. That, that, that's that's one thing that. You can have some confidence in with, with underscore is that most of its implementations are uh, are, are correct and the, and, and a, um, among the best ways of doing it or or, or the best in, in that they're very performant. Um, they, there has been a focus on performance. Uh, um, the, the the creator of this library is is um, um, does anybody know how to pronounce his last name properly? Ashkenaz. Ashkenaz. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, so he, um, um, you, you, you know him from uh, from CopyScript and from Backbone. Um, you know, same guy who's created all, all, all these libraries. So um, he's um, he's definitely put a lot of work into um, the performance, and that's been continually. Um, there's one exception here I know of that should be taken into account by anybody who is do, using um, underscore from Node, which is that a, a number of the uh, the um, functions that, that, that um, provide um, um, iterators over um, some arbitrary large array um, can be blocky. So if you're doing this from Node and you're processing a very large amount of data, um, that could be problematic. And, and there are in some other libraries non-blocking versions of, um, of the, those same functions. So um, if that is ever a concern um, or you think it may be, um, you may want to look at that more closely. But See, I don't know if you'd be able to pull this up, but for those who are really interested in learning how this works, um, the, the, the source code for underscore is annotated, and it's really a great read. I mean, if you ever want to like, uh, if you want to bone up on your JavaScript, no, it's really great. Uh, uh, just, I mean, it's, it'll, it'll really ch it'll challenge you, but it'll really give you some insights into how all this stuff, uh, how all this stuff works and how, how the magic's done, so. And it's linked right off the underscore homepage, so. 
I, uh, I, earlier tonight, I, I was using Latin, and it took about a second for it to do something that when I wrote it in other JavaScript, it took 10 milliseconds. And I thought that was a pretty substantial uh, failure, to say the least. Uh, I didn't know you knew anything about that. I mean, Flat's a pretty simple function. I don't really understand what the hell it's doing to take that much longer. It was in node, so I don't know. I was kind of shocked. That when you use the underscore? Yeah, I used the underscore one, and I, I benchmarked and seeing, like, well, what's taking so long? I thought it was the database, when I timed it out, and it's actually my JavaScript, and I looked at it as the flatten function. It was taking forever to run. And then when I, I coded it up, just straight up JavaScript without using underscore, and it was literally 100 times faster. Did the one you made uh, recursively go down or just flatten one layer? It just flattened one layer. So that would be a difference. Does flatten? I think if flatten recursively goes down, we'll unnest all arrays. Yeah, flatten is not concat. Concat is one level deep. Flatten is it's arbitrarily deep. So, any other questions, or you wanna be moving towards fear and hacking or? Hacking?